Hello everyone, I'm Eric from Etiquette and it's nice to see you this uh, Sunday evening for me. It's 10 p.m. here. I'm living in South Korea and it is the 21st of February 2021. Welcome to the Etiquette live stream and on this stream, on this weekly live stream, we talk about teaching or I just talk about anything that comes up. So when you join, just uh, add your questions or your comments, say hi, where you're from and we'll talk about it a little bit. So, hi guys, yeah, um, when you're here, just put your name in the comments. I know it's a little bit dark today. It's because I'm still busy shooting that series I've been telling you about. So, I've my plan for this past vacation was to, to shoot 100 videos, or, well, yeah, 100 videos, and I'm around 60, 70 right now, so I'm a, I'm a bit behind, I need to catch up. If you're there, just put your name in the comments. Where are you from? So we can talk a little bit. Yeah, so um, I usually use my um, light, to a, a, a light um, uh, that I, that a ring light. It's like that ring light. You've probably seen my eyes. They look like they've got a ring. Oh, here we go, Letty. You are number one. It's raining in Sueta in Spain. Okay, wow. Yeah, the weather's been very crazy. I think... Um, you know, it's it's been snowing in Texas, and I, I've heard it's been raining in Europe. And uh, for, for me, um, I think here in Korea, there have been a few cold snaps and then very beautiful warm days. So it's a little bit different. Sun, hi, Sun. How are you doing from London? Nice. Um, uh, Sun, uh, what do you do in London? Are you an English teacher or are you learning English? Um, and another Sun. Mary Sun, hi. I'm from Myanmar. Well, hello. So nice to have you, Mary. Uh, guys, if you have any questions, if there's anything you want to talk about, please put the put it in the comments. Uh, yeah. So, like I was saying, I'm I'm busy shooting that series. I'm only seventy percent done with shooting it. So I left the ring light in my other room where I'm busy shooting it. So you're just going to have to deal with all the darkness. It's storming here in the Philippines. Jake, wow. So it's it's raining a lot there. I was I was actually, I was on the roof earlier tonight. I, I went, I had dinner. I came back and I looked up and I saw, I saw stars in the sky, which is, uh, you know, it's quite rare. Uh, I, I really miss living in South Africa. I'm originally from South Africa. And, you know, you, you always see stars in the sky. I really miss that. Uh, Ashwani, hi. Good evening. How are you doing, Ashwani? Uh, where are you from? Oh, and by the way, Jake, I've got some friends on on uh, Facebook. And I saw that the the, uh, the peso is going up. No, th that's not too bad, you know. Hi, Ashwani. How are you doing? Yeah, so um, what have I been doing? I've been trying to stay busy, but I haven't been working as hard as I would like. and Actually, I've only got one more week of vacation left to finish the series before my classes start at my university too. So I've got to work very hard to get everything done and also prepare for my classes, which is good. Vahid, hi. Um, so good to see you. I hope you're okay. Vahid, I'm doing so well. I'm just uh, struggling with a few things at the moment, you know, um, personal things and then, you know, decisions I have to make. Uh, nothing. And um, also, you know, I've got to finish this series, you know, I, I was just watching this video by uh, this one actor that says, you know, you should always be uncomfortable. And that sounds kind of like advice that we don't hear a lot. We usually say, I think, you know what, I want to be comfortable. I want to be happy. And but but basically what he said is, you know, growth doesn't happen. You don't become better if you're comfortable all the time. What you should be is happy and what was the word he used dissatisfied happy and dissatisfied so that even though you are happy you're always striving to to improve in some area in your life and for me i've i've constantly got this you've got to finish the series eric i've had that that this whole vacation and i just can't do it uh jake you said you had a typhoon wow okay and uh ashwani you're uh, indian wow namaste good to have you um and you where are you from currently i am working in south korea but originally i'm from south africa i'm sure you know south africa um uh what topic will you be teaching in your first class as well that's very interesting um uh 
Lady, I'm very, I'm a very boring teacher. You know, once you get into a system or you've got a certain way of doing things, then it's easy. Oh, guys, by the way, if you've got any questions, if you've got any problems, put it in the comments below. I have no idea what I'm going to talk about today. So when you send me questions, I'm like, okay, I've got something to talk about. Okay, so um, Letty, um, what do I do in my first classes? It's just a, a quick meet and greet. Um, my priority is to get the students comfortable with me and to, to tell them exactly what's going to happen that year. And also I want to set the tone of what I expect them to do in the class. So I expect them to, to uh, practice, to work in groups, to, to ask questions, to answer questions if I ask them. Um, so yeah, it's definitely like that. Mrs. Sabiela, hi, how are you doing? And she says, hi, everyone. Uh, Ashwani, sir, you are very intelligent. Uh, thank you so much, Ashwani. But I think I'm, I'm okay. I guess <laughs> I was, <laughs> I was, uh, I was watching this video today, and uh, a guy was talking about something, and um, I thought, oh, th there's a different way to say it. What word did I want to use? I was actually five minutes ago. I'm like, what is that word that I wanted to use? And so I sat there for like a minute thinking, what is that word I, I was thinking about? And by the way, the word was leverage. And I, I, after two minutes of thinking of it, I finally remembered. Um, Jake, challenges make life exciting, right? But I, I also want to just say that it should be appropriate challenges, you know? Um, many times people create these fantasy type of challenges where they like, if everything happens perfectly, that's what would happen. Or, you know, it's highly improbable that they would reach it. And then you get people that um, put challenges too low where it's too easy. But uh, and but I think it's it's better to put it too high than too low. Or most people don't even challenge themselves. They just go through life and they expect things to change when the only way to have change in your life is to move towards that change. I guess. Um, uh, Jake said, um, hi, how are you doing? I need to learn um, the Russian alphabet. Uh, and then, um, Jake, are you in Korea now? Yes, I am. Oh, you're from Tajikistan. Nice. I've got another friend from Taz, uh, Tajikistan. Tajikistan, sorry. Uh, what is the lowest level you teach? Uh, well, Leti, actually, I teach freshman uh, beginner English. So many of the students that come in, they have, they've, uh, I know for a fact for the past 10 years, they've been studying English, but still their speaking is very low, you know? So I know that these students coming in, they've got a basic grasp of, of English. They, they can understand me, but they struggle with their confidence and their speaking. And also, you know, I can help them with their grammar and formulating sentences and um, thinking in their, you know, thinking of what they want to say. So um, I, I deal with beginners, but it's not absolute beginners. They have some experience. So it's very simple for me to go in there. I'm basically just a medium for them to work through. I'm I'm there to motivate them, to guide them, and it's just up to them to step up and practice and and you know uh, achieve what they want that semester. So it's it's very easy for me. Um, and for some reason, I do really well with the beginners. I have taught intermediate and advanced students too, uh, but there aren't many of them in Korea. So uh, I usually, because we've got many teachers there, I usually uh, get the beginner classes. Uh, Jake, how old are these students? Uh, they're freshmen in university, my classes. I've taught all, all, all students. Yeah, every age group you can think of, I've probably taught them. Um, and, but these are freshmen in university, so they're probably 19, 20 years old. Sometimes, the uh, so in Korea, a lot of the boys get um, have to go and do military service. So sometimes they do it immediately after high school so that they can finish it. It takes about two years. Um, so sometimes they come into my class and they're a little bit older, especially if they have to redo class, but the majority of them are um, freshmen. Maid, hi, how are you doing? I think it's Maid, Maid, uh, from Iran, nice to have you. Uh, you look outgoing. Yeah, Mary, I think I am outgoing, but I was talking to a friend a little bit earlier and I said, you know what, um, these days, let's say the night before I went and I, I met some friends and I had some drinks, the next day 
I would just stay at home and I would relax. And it's, it's, I need someone to kind of push me to go out in that case, you know, but no, I think I'm, I'm kind of social when I go out. I'm not too shy, but I don't think, you know, a lot of people talk about uh, being introverted or extroverted and growing up, you get bombarded with these things. Yeah. You're kind of shy. That means that you're introverted. And when I was very young, I was like elementary school, you know, I, I thought, wow, you know what? I'm probably very introverted. And I know people say that the, the difference between introverts and extroverts is that as an extrovert, you get energy from being outside. And as an introvert, you, you get energy from being alone. But you know what I think? I think the majority of the world's population, the way the world, how we live alone, right? In a lot of countries, a lot of cultures, it's kind of changing where we're not in that family dynamic. We're not with friends all the time. We actually, we spend a lot of time in our rooms, on our own, just with our own thoughts and our computers. So now you've got this thing where most people spend a lot of time alone to recover and get energy. So they say, oh, well, is everyone then introverted and only 5% of the population extroverted? So I don't believe that. So I told you that when I was um, when I was in elementary school, I thought, oh, I'm shy, I'm introverted. But when I got to middle school and high school, something snapped in me and I said, you know what? If I want to be more extroverted, I'm going to have to talk. I'm going to have to put myself into these positions where other people are. I'm going to have to try and approach strangers and new people, talking with them, or um, be okay, find courage within myself to speak in front of a group of people. And ever since I taught myself that, I don't believe in this whole introverted, extroverted thing. And most, I think most people don't agree with me, which is fine. But I, I don't like that thing about uh, telling our students that too. That's why with my students, I tell them, listen, one of my rules, I expect you to talk in my class. You are a speaking machine. No, because in Korea, a lot of students are shy. So I tell them there's a rule in my class. You cannot be shy. And as soon as they know that it's it's not a choice anymore, they have to speak, then they do it. You know, so um, I know it's, it's a long thing I was talking about, but you get the idea. Bianca, hi. I'm just going to drink a sip of water. Hello, I missed the previous meeting. Glad to join this evening. Bianca, you are very welcome. Thank you for joining us. We've got a really lovely group of teachers that come here every week and listen to me talk about teaching or anything. So if you've got any questions, just put it in there. Um, Letty, I do want to talk a little bit more about what I do in my first, um, my first class. So I go into class, students come in. Uh, we will be we will have real classes we will have in class uh, classes right so i will see the students but if something happens like let's say there there's a spike in covid numbers then we might be able to move online very quickly so i'm going to prepare my students for that even though i'm going to see them the first week uh, face to face i'm going to tell them listen um you know as so if something happens I'm switching online. We're moving there and um, we're going to take it from there. So I'm just preparing them in case of an emergency. Jake, message my students in our group chat. They just seen my message, no reply. I am bothered, experience the same. Jake, that's a great, that's a, that's a, you know, it's, it's a difficult thing. It's not just with teachers messaging students that, you know, you message your students and none of them reply and, um, you know, you get upset because maybe you've got some important information you want to share with them or instructions and they don't do it. I think it's in our everyday lives, too. You know, so let's say, for example, there's someone you kind of like and you send them a message and they don't message back. That That's also not a good feeling. I know most of you know what I'm talking about. Right. Um, so here's what I would do with those students is you want to train your students to check your messages and to and to reply. You want to train them. So instead of sending them long, long messages from the start, what I would do is let's say I get my students number, um, my, their contact details, their numbers. I put them in a group chat, right? Um, or a message. I would start off small. I would say, hi guys, this is Eric. I'm your teacher. Um, 
uh, if you got this, just send me a Y so that I can see. So the students know that it's low effort just to send a Y. I'm not asking them any big questions. I'm not asking them to do any homework. I just want them to send a Y. And then maybe the next time I send them, it could be a couple of hours later. It could be a couple of days later. I'm like, OK, well, um, you know, uh, what is your what is something you want to work on in this class? What is something you want uh, in, in one? Give me one word on something you want to want to uh, or send me one word. What is your favorite animal? OK, and then students oh, what's my favorite animal? Send that the next time I ask him, give me a sentence of what you want to um, uh, you know what you did last week so they send me a message what they and then systematically you are training them to reply quicker and quicker you can even play games where you say okay everyone uh, there's candy for the next uh, for the first five ten students that sends me their name they get a candy and then they're going to also be trained to message you quicker right so we, we've got to think about it as teachers you know some of these students aren't used to it so we want to kind of get them into that messaging mode. Kezia, how are you doing? Kezia, um, yeah, I was uh, one of our friends, our mutual friends, was there, uh, it, it was uh, her graduation or their graduation and went there. It was really like uh, lovely. I went there on, what was it, Thursday. Had a really good time. It's always, you know, I, I went there. Uh, we took a lot of photos at the graduation. It was, you know, it's, it's so good to see um, you know, years of work paying off and finally they get their reward, you know, and everything good that we want in life, we've got to work hard for, you know, it's, it's a, it's a good reminder, but it also, it, it made me think of my graduation when I was uh, studying to become a teacher. I remember, um, I was graduating, um, and for some reason I put on a lot of weight. I remember with my parents and also my parents went with me to the graduation, I put on a lot of weight. I'm like, oh, probably funny. I went in and I even got like professional photos because they are photographers and you can pay to get photos. So I went with my parents and I stood there for, <laughs> and I took these photos and I thought, oh man, these are my graduation photos for the rest of my life. And I looked horrible. So yeah, um, I think, you know, for, future events i'm really going to put in more efforts it really made me think of it oh two um so actually kesia is from uh, indonesia and then uh ryan natal also from indonesia Apakabar. good to see you guys and then we've also got english danny by the way if you guys don't know english danny he has a channel where uh english, uh, english learners can go and learn some interesting things it's really good if you want to learn and if you're in english teach and you want to get some ideas and tips Go and check out English Danny Learn English channel. I see he's changed the title a little bit. Alsa. Always lovely to see Alsa. Alsa is one of our most favorite people. And we can also always recognize her with the rainbow. She always just brings happiness wherever she goes. Alsa, are you doing well? Um, and then Sri. Sri, hi. Sri Vani. I'm from India Center Head at a kindergarten school. Um, Sri, you know what? Um, I have so much respect for kindergarten teachers because I know how difficult it is. You've got, you know, you've got basically you've got kids that they can't express themselves well and you've got to teach them. So, um, yeah, uh, Sri, if you've got anything you want to share in the comments and the rest of you, too, if you've got any questions or any tips or any experiences you would like to share and you want me to talk about, put it in there. Wow. It's a ghost. It's NASA. Oh, Naza, where have you been? Naza, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, I'm, um, uh, well, I'm not good. I'm a little bit stressed at the moment. I've got um, some things waiting for me and I've I've got to um, finish this stupid series. Not stupid series. It's a fine series. But, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm angry at myself for not doing enough work before the semester starts. But anyway, Naza, how have you been? Um, really been uh, wondering about you. Uh, I like that book title you have. What is that? The Healing Power of Doing Good. Mm, what wise words. Naza, how are you doing? We've missed you. Uh, Jake, I'm teaching grade eight English. Okay, Jake, that is, um, I think that is a good time for the students. What are they, like um, 13, 14 years old? That's a good time, but it's also challenging because I think with that age range where puberty comes into play, the kids get a little bit crazy and 
you know, I feel like you've got to be a little bit stricter at that age range because at that age, the, the middle school phase, um, phase, they are more likely to take to take risks and, you know, to try things to get away with it. So I feel with that age range, you've got to be a little bit more strict and in control because very quickly it can spiral out of control. And you've also got to um, you, you've got to manage their emotions a little bit better. So, Jake, um, respect to that. I know it's a little bit more difficult. Mrs. Abula says, um, Thursday, I celebrate my 61st birthday with my mini school and take a lot of games with the kids. We had fun. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that, Mrs. Abiela. Happy birthday to you. Um, I hope you had a lovely time, and uh, I'm so happy that you're on here. I, I can't believe your grandmother, though, because let me tell you why. Um, next year, it's my mom's birthday, and I will go... Um, I will go back to South Africa to go and have celebrated with her. And she's a year younger than you. She's turning 60 next year. So you, I can't believe your grandmother so young. Um, let's see. Who do we have here? Uh, let's go down. Am I late? Oh, I'm very late. It's already 20 minutes in. I'm 10 minutes late. Okay, guys, I'll go a little bit quicker. I'm so sorry. Um, from Malaysia. Hi, Ros, uh, uh, Rosmisa Wati. Also... Leti, what is your favorite topic that you teach? Um, yeah, anything that I can relate to the students. But if it's something that I find interesting, if it's something that, you know, if it's if it's a topic that you like, it's so easy to teach it. So if the students ask me about my country or if we do a topic that I find interesting or fascinating, I'll really go into it. Uh, Rodrigo, hi, how are you doing? Nazar, what are some techniques we can use to boost one student's autonomy. Yeah, we've uh, so to get the students to do more, I think that's uh, a lot to do with motivation and also, you know, um, uh, motivating our students to act independently, right? That's what we, you mean by autonomy. That's, uh, so you want the students to be studying on their own. You want them to take responsibility for their lives. And how you can do that, I think some Tech techniques to do that. Um, you know, some basic things with motivation, Naza, is like, you know, let's say you give the students uh, an activity to do. You say, okay, everyone, uh, it's time for your speeches, right? Now, if, if you want them to be uh, autonomous, you, you can say, okay, I'm going to give, so let's say the speech counts 20 points. Then you say, okay, I'm going to give an extra five points for anybody who makes who adds something extra or interesting to that speech. So if the, the speeches are on your favorite animal, you tell them, I want you to think of a way to make the speech even better and more exciting. And there will be five extra points for anyone who can do that. And so you're basically rewarding them to think out of the box. So when they start doing that and you start rewarding that, you say, oh, that they do something different. You're like, well done, extra points for you. They, they start seeing that that is something that you want from them. And in most cases, you know, what most teachers ask of their students is, uh, listen, pay attention, do your work. So if you want your students to be more autonomous, you should start rewarding them. You should give them opportunities to be autonomous. You should give um, during assignments or during class even, you know, you should you should give them a way to stand up and stand out. And when they do that, you reward that. That will show them, oh, the teacher wants me to to be more proactive. And other students, if they see that you're valuing that, they will also start doing that. Um, I haven't thought of any other techniques or things, but that's just something I, I would start thinking about, Naza. Uh, Rodrigo from Brazil. I was thinking about that. How are you doing, Rodrigo? Sri, I want to learn kin uh, classes for kindergarten. Okay, um, actually, Sri, I did do a video on phonics, and the the, the thing is, um, I it's it's a presentation I did. I, I'm quickly going into my YouTube studio. I will find it for you. Um, how to teach phonics? I'll quickly find it for you. Uh, phonics? No, not that one. Uh, phonics. I'm just going to say phonics. So this is actually, so um, 
this is a video I did. It's a presentation, how to teach phonics. I think it has some really good tips in there. I'm proud of this presentation, but not many of my viewers know of it. It's, it's not very popular because it's very long. But I'm going to share this with you. And I think what I should do in the future is I should actually revisit some of these things. But I've got so much on my plate right now. But in the future, I will definitely revisit these ideas because this video is maybe 40 minutes long, which is very long for the average viewer. So what I want to do is I want to create new videos, take those ideas and then just share it with you like that. Mario, hola, how are you doing? Um, Mario, um, yeah, thank you so much for your messages again. Sometimes I post these short videos and Mario always sends me a message. Mario, how are you doing? Uh, Ali from Iraq. Hi, Ali. How about you? Um, what do you teach? Uh, Chris Allah, nice to see you again from Argentina. Um, question, do you use the native language with your beginner students, for example, to explain grammar? Grisella, that is what I was thinking about. So um, I've, I've, I've answered this question quite a few times, but I think it's something that still comes up a lot because this is something that a lot of teachers think about. Using L1 in the classroom, right? And your question specifically is using L1. Oh, I wanted to make a video about it in the future. I haven't, and you just reminded me. Thank you. I'll shoot that video during the week. I think I'll work on it. But um, so back to your question, um, using uh, the student's native language in the classroom to teach grammar. Here is where I stand on it. The more English you can get your students to use, the better. Because it's very easy for students to start using their native language because it's comfortable. But I do use the native language. I'm, I'm, I teach in Korea. I don't speak Korean very well. But I use Korean when I can explain grammar very quickly because let's say I want to explain the past tense to them. I can give them uh, an, ex uh, an expression uh, like uh, I can give them a Korean expression and immediately they understand. They're like, oh, OK, so that's the meaning. Right. Instead of me trying to explain it in English and give them many examples. So uh, we talked about it before. When you teach, there are basically two ways to teach inductive and deductive. I think inductive is you give them the examples and they kind of figure it out. And then deductive is you give them the reason and then they can get examples from it. So what I like to do is sometimes when I teach grammar, I you can use both. I, I give my students the, the, native, uh, the Korean for the expression or for the grammar and they pick it up very quickly. Or if it's funny, you know, if, if I want the students, if I want to snap them back, if I want them to, uh, if I've got something funny to snap, uh, to say, they're like, oh, that's funny. And they, they, they're focused on the class again, which is a very useful tool. Um, what I would also do is I would, um, you know, when I use Korean, maybe they will think, oh, this teacher actually cares and they're more interested in me as a teacher. And we should never disregard what our students think of us as a person because if they are more interested in you as a person and your stories and your life experience they're more likely to learn about it uh actually so that's my answer try and use as much english as possible but if you just quickly want to teach them um you know use some nate uh, use some of the l1 uh or if it's funny or if you just want to get their attention but Remember, tell your students you want them to speak more English. Um, but it reminds me, uh, I had this comment today, five hours ago. Um, uh, one of the viewers said, uh, you know what, Eric, um, a lot of us struggle with motivation and, you know, uh, it's difficult to do something new. So what she suggested is she likes making friends. And because of the, that social commitment and, you know, you want to communicate with them, it motivates her to learn the language. And I thought, yeah, that's a, that's a great reason, you know. And it's the same with our students. If you teach them, maybe they will put more effort in. Maybe they'll learn an expression they can use with them. I remember sometimes when you teach these very young kids and they come in with this, they're like, teacher, teacher. And then they use this word that they've never used before, you know, like bottle or something. It's like they show this and say, oh, bottle. 
and then you smile and and they just feel so good because you acknowledge the extra effort they put into it so yeah very important tip there uh ros uh ros mizawati ros mizawati okay let me just take a sip of water guys am i too slow still yeah i'm 20 minutes behind i need to go quicker i'm so sorry I'll go through a little bit faster. Can you share some easy techniques to make students remember more vocabulary as English is the second or third language for most students here? Mm, well, I've got a great one for you. Um, actually, I did a video on vocabulary, a couple of, um, it's not a technique for remembering vocabulary. This is a different video though. It's just a vocabulary activities. So it's not exactly what you're looking for. Um, but I'll think about it, how to get students to um, remember and memorize more vocabulary. I'll think about it, Rosmi uh, Zawati. I'll think about it. But um, yeah, uh, watch this video that I put out. That's got some activities, but it's not exactly what you're looking for. I know what you mean. After school days, just want to stay home, adulting. That's so true. You know, it's, it's really difficult. You know, teaching is very exhausting. You know, so you're teaching and you just want to get home, lay down, put everything down, get a foot rub. Um, I definitely know the feeling. Uh, and my dad's here. Sorry, dad, I'm so late. Uh, extroverts are more flexible and fluent, maybe. Uh, I can see that because they speak more. Uh, my dear, love your clips. They are extremely functional. Thank you so much for saying that. Um, uh, that's what I kind of go for for my videos. You know, when I think about the type of videos I make, I, I, I want them to be well, you know, useful to people. And um, if I I only use, I only put it into my videos if I think I would use it. Right, Vahid, uh, what do you think is possible to improve my pronunciation at my age? I think my tongue is already hardened. It's difficult to catch the sentences in movies because they are too fast. Uh, well, Vahid, I think you should challenge yourself. You are one of the, the people that I admire the most for studying so hard and you're constantly trying to improve yourself. So first of all, remember that there is no ceiling for you. You know, if you say, oh, my pronunciation isn't good, find someone whose pronunciation you like and watch some of their videos. If they speak too fast, try and slow it down or re-listen to it and then try and mimic or copy the way that they speak, the way that some of the phrases they say or the pronunciation of certain words, and then find yourself using those words in your conversations. So, Vahid, never too late. You know that. Don't even bring age into this. But um, I, I would say challenge yourself to find someone to copy or uh, it could be a few people that you admire. You like the way they speak. Uh, we are always talking about the TV show Friends where they speak clearly and they use good language. So maybe give that a try. But now, man, I need to learn the Cyrillic alphabet. Hi, Eric. How long have you been teaching in South Korea? Do you have offline students? Um, I have been here for 10 years. And um, yeah, all my students right now are offline. It's face-to-face -face classes. I, um, uh, so next week, our classes are starting. Um, so, But it's face-to-face. But at any moment, we should give our students, if, if they want to do online, we should give them the option to do it. But I'm going to um, I'm going to ask my students, I'm going to say, listen, can you come in, do the face to face? But if there is like an explosion in case numbers, then we'll move online. It's very difficult to do both at the same time, uh, a hybrid at the same time. So you're teaching face to face and online at the same time. But it's very easy doing either face-to-face -face or off uh, or uh, online. Where in the UK are you? I am not in the UK, Rodrigo. I am in South Korea. Uh, but no, uh, hi, how long have you been teaching? Already said, uh, Ahmed, uh, are you planning to have a discussion lesson in Zoom? Ahmed, um, so I was thinking about, uh, well, most of my lessons with my students are in Zoom. But a couple of weeks ago, I asked, I asked everyone, hey guys, do you want to join me on a Zoom live stream? And not enough people told me yes. So um, I think I think I should have uh, 
you know, mark, uh, told more people about it or been more clear about how I wanted to do it. Maybe in the future I will do it again. Okay. Um, Jake, great. Uh, we'll follow your suggestions. Haven't done it before. I'm really quite upset if they don't respond in my messages. Thanks. Um, don't take it personally. Um, you know, I think um, when it comes to messages and stuff, when it comes to life in general with our students, try not to take it personally. Like, you know, because they aren't messaging you, it's hurting you. Uh, what I would say, and it's the same in class, you know, if a student misbehaves, don't take it because they don't like you. It could be because you don't, you know, you, you're not in control of the class as much as you would like to be. But it's not because they dislike you. But a lot of teachers take it personally and they're like, this kid does it because of me. And they, they get into a confrontation with the student instead of saying to the student, listen, guys, when I message you, I expect you to message me back. Um, uh, I know that you are on your phone or I know you read my messages. I want you to message me as soon as possible. Uh, because I'm sending you some. So give them that speech. Don't be angry at them and mm, say, just tell them you're disappointed in them, you know, like a like a grandmother's disappointed in her grandkids, you know. Uh, Mary San, I wanted to say thank you. The previous, uh, you gave me an idea for my quiet student. He's okay now. He likes games. So I create games for them like quiz and bamboozle games. These are cool. Um, actually, Mary, I've got three videos for you guys. Um, there's another website, if you don't know it, called uh, Wordwall, wordwall.net. Uh, many of the teachers already use it. Um, I made a video of it, but it, I'll probably send out that video next week or two weeks later. This Tuesday, I'm releasing a video on English classroom instructions. Um, I think it's going to be a good one. Many of my viewers asked me about it. They said, Eric, I want this video. So that will come out on Tuesday. And um, yeah, it's uh, about 12 minutes long. I'm sure many of you will enjoy it. So check that out. Um, yeah, ah, oh, yeah, Jaira, nice to see you again from Costa Rica. How are you doing? Uh, Abhilasha, hello from India. Namaste. Um, wait, where's that word I learned? Tokais high up log. Tokais high up log. How are you? Um, that's a really good one that uh, Ahmed told me, uh, Ashmi told me. Uh, Q King, hello. I'm not at home today, but just wanted to stay, drop by and say hi. Q King, thank you so much. It's so lovely to see you. I love seeing your name whenever I'm on Facebook. Uh, Abdor, hi there from Poland. I'm a teacher in a primary school. Hi, Abdor. It's great to have you. Um, I haven't had many Polish viewers, so it's, it's great to have you here. Um, I've, um, I'm very interested in, uh, maybe lots of you don't watch it, but, um, I like to watch UFC, you know, the fighting and one of the champions, his name is Jan Blauvich. Uh, I can't say it's Blauvich. Jan, uh, anyway, and, uh, he's from Poland and he's always, he's a, such a strong and confident man. Uh, I really admire the way that he, he communicates, you know, he's, he's certain of himself and he always talks about Polish power. And uh, yeah, I really admire him. Very interesting. He's fighting against um, uh, another fighter in two weeks time called uh, Israel Adesanya. It's going to be such a great fight. I can't wait for it. Um, Cheryl, how are you doing? Sorry, that was a bit loud. <laughs> I think it's like, Cheryl, it goes up. Cheryl, how are you doing? I'm present. Very nice. Ping, good to see you. Hello, everyone. Hi, Eric. Sorry, I'm a bit late because I decided to finish my PowerPoint for third grade students till the end of March. Wow. See, Ping, I need your dedication. Good job. You know, we've all got this uh, work we have to do and complete. So when someone says, Eric, you know what? I'm a little bit late. I wanted to finish this. I respect that because I've been I've been working so hard to get the series done. And if I was as dedicated as you are, Ping, I would have been done two, three, three weeks ago. But instead, I'm like, mm, mm, mm. Ah, this week, though, I need to finish it. Um, yeah, Jaira, in my case, I'm working in primary school. Also nice. Uh, um, uh, I first started in primary school, so I really miss it. Um, you know, I, I love one of the things I enjoy most about teaching um, is talking to other teachers, especially primary school teachers. They've always got stories to tell and stories to share. 
So I love talking with you guys. Uh, Jake, thanks for the tips for my English class. Copy that. Good. Mrs. Abula, you've got five grandchildren. Don't tell my mom. She's going to get so jealous. I need to. Oh, speaking of which, here's my mom. <laughs> Keep mind over matter dealing with stress, son. Uh, yes, mom, it's just uh, sometimes, you know, you've got these obstacles that you have to face in life and um, it's not nice, but you've got to do it. So, yeah, that's just that's something I'm struggling with at the moment. Yeah. Uh, Satan, hi from Indonesia. Another Indonesian. So nice to have you. Uh, I need to learn some new words from my friends. Actually, I went to I went to Costco today. Costco is like a big shop where you go and I'm still 20 minutes behind. I'm sorry, guys. I see that I'm 20 minutes behind uh, the comments. Um, uh, well, I went to Costco and with another Indonesian friend of mine, so it was really nice. Mrs. Sabila, two of my grandchildren are in my class. I'm sure, I hope they behave in there. Fukito, almost miss you. Hi. Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here, Fukito. Lovely to have you. See, I'm, uh, guys, this message came out um, uh, 20, 10, 25, so 15 minutes ago. So I'm running a little bit late. I'm sorry. I'll get to your messages now. Uh, Mate, uh, what if no matter what you do, the motivation always somewhere hidden? They just don't seem interested. Um, yeah, you've got to get it out of them. Otherwise, you know what? The, the, they, will, they will reflect what you send at them. Uh, the emotion. So if you want someone to um, smile, you're going to smile at them. If you want someone to to um, admire you, you're going to look at them and start admiring them. So you should start putting that out into them. So if 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 you go into class and you're very motivated, right, and you smile at them and you you work on yourself to keep yourself uh, energetic you give yourself reasons to work hard uh, you're going to inspire motivation in them so you say that it is hidden so it is in them just keep on pushing at them and then what can you do you can give them material that they find interesting and inspiring so you know whatever you're teaching them first it's up to you to be motivated and to get them to be excited about the classes and then if that doesn't work, then you've got to give them material or topics or teach in a way that they enjoy. You should also, um, but I want to, uh, one warning, um, don't try and force yourself to do everything. What I like to do in my classes is I am friendly, I am uplifting, but I want to get my students talking as much as possible and sharing more of their own lives and experiences and thoughts than I do. So in every class I have, I try and limit the teacher talking time. I try and get the students talking. So remember that. Uh, Mario, uh, teacher Eric, I made that game that you indicated in the last video with my intensive and my super cool friends. Are, are you talking about the, the uh, questions game? So guys, a little bit, I think, yeah, on Thursday, uh, I made a video where um, there is a worksheet, a worksheet, a, a, like a board game with questions that you can use. And that's what Mario is talking about. Basically, it's a, it's a, like questions, who, what, where, where. And then it's got a topic, like the students have to get around the board game and they have to ask each other questions about it. So it's really fun. You should check it out. Uh, Mrs. Sabila, thanks for the sip. Hi, Ariza from Japan. Uh, uh, konnichiwa. Um, uh, uh, is it Ohio is it at night? Um, I, I always I know a few um, Japanese words because I've been in Japan um, twice now. I would love to visit again. And I also watch a lot of anim anime. So I, I learn a few words that I can use, but uh, I'm still not very confident. Where do you live, son? I'm in South Korea. Uh, uh, Letty, for four year Jolly, Jolly Phonics. It's easy. Yeah, Jolly Phonics, very easy. Um, I am looking into the future to start promoting. I, I want to do a series where I have a series of books, let's say Jolly Phonics, and I show exactly how I would teach that in class, what activities I would do, how I would explain the grammar or the words. So that's something I want to do. Saima, long time no see. Oh, well, it just it feels like ages, you know, because you and Naza, I think you guys came at the same time around. 
So every time I see you, I'm like, oh, it's been, it feels like it's been so long. How have you been, Saima? Uh, Pam, Moon from Vietnam. Hi, good to have you. How are you doing? Uh, Terry, good day. Uh, I have a class of 30 students. Five of them are newcomers. Any suggestions for warm-up activity to make those newcomers comfortable with the class? Um, yeah, so I think, yeah, you, it, it should be fun. Um, um, yeah, I, I think a fun thing would be is um, sit, the, sit the five students together um, and then let them write down interesting facts about themselves um and then um get the other students uh, and then you you the so put those five students together um now i'm trying to do something where they share things about themselves give me a second to think about this terry that's a good question i thought i had an idea but it, it comes down to getting uh, those new students to interact with the the old students in a way that's fun and let the old students practice asking questions and getting new things out of them. Um, I, I did a game. I, I explained a game uh, called Alibi, where the students have to go outside and the students inside think of questions they can ask them. The ones outside have to think of an alibi, and excuse, and then they come back in. That might be a good uh, icebreaker. So you say, for example, last night at seven o'clock, um, somebody stole my sandwich. Um, I want you guys to all the new students to go to sit in a corner and talk about you have to be an alibi. Where were you? What were you doing? What was the weather like? Things like that. And then the other groups, you put them, let's say uh, the, uh, there are 25 other students, you put them into groups of five. You say, okay, I want each group to start thinking of questions you want to ask those students. So then those five students come in each to a different table. And these other students practice asking them questions. Where were you? What did, were you doing? And then they switch. And at the end of it, they have such a good time trying to ask these five new students interesting questions. Well, that's just a one warm up activity, but you should try and make it fun. Um, Grisella, thanks a lot. You are so generous. Thank you, Grisella. It's always nice to hear that. Uh, Saima says, my students are good at speaking, but not writing. Students are not allowed to speak L1 at school. We teachers can L. Yeah, that's very good. Right, I, I can understand that, that makes sense. Because once students start speaking L1, they might just continue. Um, so, uh, but not writing. Um, I think you should try and incorporate writing and speaking together, right? So, um, for example, when they, uh, if you show them like a movie clip, um, ask them to write down the dialogue and then ask them to write down the scene and then ask them to write down um, step by step, what is happening in third person view. And then you can ask them to write it in first person view. Now they're one of the characters. And then you can write an alternate ending. I, I did a video on writing activities, Saima, that you might check out. But yeah, um, what I want to say is incorporate the speaking and the writing together to really get it. Guys, already 50 minutes. Where is the time going? And by the way, I know the lighting isn't very good. Um, my light inside, um, I'm still shooting that series. Can you help me find the answer to the question, how to motivate students to practice for tests and exams? How to encourage students to give the answers and eagerly? Um, well, um, Pam, um, I think this is very important. This is actually something that I was thinking about before too, how to motivate students. Oh, see, I actually, I wrote this down before and I need to make a video on that. But what I said before about um, you know, getting the students, uh, rewarding the students for when they give uh, answers and stuff, right? That's a very important part. In, in this latest video, my newest video will come out on Tuesday. And one of the, uh, and it's all about classroom instructions. And one of the topics I talk about is motivating students. So um, we've definitely, once the students do so, we give, we allow our students to do good things. Uh, we, we basically set them up to succeed and then we praise them for succeeding. And that reinforces what we want them to do in class, right? So um, yeah, watch that video. And eventually I need to make a video on how to motivate students. I'll make that in the future. Um, then uh, Toby, so could you kindly share how to make a teaching portfolio? Hmm. 
I haven't made one of those before. Um, I think it basically comes down to, you know, if you've taught a semester or two, give some examples of some of the um, the lessons that you have taught, uh, give examples of activities that you taught, maybe some tests, um, uh, some rubrics. So a teaching portfolio should show exactly what you can do as a teacher. So uh, specifically, um, you know, focus on the types of lessons that you do and the activities. I'm guessing, this is just a guessing answer. I'll have to answer, it. sorry about that. I'll have to answer that a little bit later. Elizabeth, hi, how are you doing? It's good to see you. Um, uh, guys, I'm going through a little bit faster now. Uh, Shilpa, sir, uh, which topics would be good for to give a demo for primary class? The, the, the problem is, um, and I found this in most cases for myself too, is if they tell you, pick a topic, pick any topic, there are so many topics that we can't really think of anything. And we're just thinking, oh, what can I do this about? And it's the same for our students. If we tell our students we want them to do a speech about, you know, the past 10 years, right? It's Or uh, just do a speech on anything. Uh, it's too broad, right? So if I were you, I would, um, if you could, topics to be good demo, I would say take open, take a book, a teaching book, open anywhere, look at the topic and just take that and try and make it interesting. Um, I did a video on teaching demo classes. Uh, let me let me quickly go and find a demo. I said demo. Uh, here we go. Real. This is a, um, so this is a real demo I did. It's not the perfect one, but it's just an example. Uh, so basically I did, did a demonstration for an online uh, job. I got the job, um, by the way, if you want to know, but um, I decided not to take it. I took a different job, uh, but it's just uh, an ex some examples of what to do for demo classes. Saima, what do you think about tongue twisters? Does it help improve pronunciation? Um, I think they are fun to do. It's a, it's like a small icebreaker, I guess. I have I have never really used icebreakers in my classes, to be honest. I've told my students some of them, and for fun, we've tried some of them, but I don't think so. You know, when am I going to use um, she sells seashells by the seashore? She sells seashells by the seashore. See, I can speak, I can pronounce stuff, but I can't say she sells seashells by the seashore. Yeah, so um, honestly, Simon, I haven't used it, but I think it might be fun as an icebreaker. See how see how your students react to it and if they enjoy it. Um, Ariza, I'm teaching primary now, and they like games. Well, you're very lucky. I've got like a billion games that I've that I've made and activities. I think one of the ones that I um, so for December, I actually did um, I did a series called Classroom Energizers and Classroom Games. So if you haven't seen it, I'll post the playlist now. And yeah, that's got like 52 games that you can try out and energizes. Um, how to assess big classroom with mixed level classes. Um, Ria Natal, I think that's a that's a that's a tough one, especially with big classes and mixed level students. Uh, you're going to have to be creative with that. Um, you know, you're going to have to find a way to mass um, assess them. Um, you can do it with different stations. So let's say you've got five stations around there and, uh, you know, the students have to do a different activity at each station. That way you get them to split up and um, they should be writing it down or doing it or there should be a way to test them. You could find some, you know, some way for the students to write things down or you could be in different stations, check up on them. I think that might be some idea of what you can do. Um, but I know it's a little bit difficult. I did do a video earlier about mixed level classes, but uh, assessing big classes as well, it's a little bit more difficult. I'll think about it, uh, Ria Natal, um, but I'm going to carry on. We're almost finished. Um, Mahab, Mayab, uh, some kids don't even try. Right. I think I definitely need to do the video on motivating students. That's important, I think. Wordwall is brilliant. I can use it for so many tasks. Yeah, but guys, use Wordwall. Like, um, uh, the video will probably come out in two or three weeks, uh, but check it out anyway before that. Jan Blahovic, thank you so much. Um, 
Haji, hi, uh, Lingyo Makan, thank you, and Israel Adesanya, thank you. Um, I bet you also watch UFC. Uh, Bahid, uh, I'll of course follow your advice. My comprehension isn't too bad, and I understand most of the movies, but it gives me sureness. Oh, good luck to you. Vahid, your your legend and a scholar. Um, I really respect you. Elsa, thank you for your kind words. I love tongue twisters because they are funny. Right, so they're fun to use, but um, I don't use it. Oh, another friend from Poland, Ed, uh, Edita. Nice to have you. Oh, when COVID is finished, I will definitely visit Poland. Um, uh, Maham, can you share the idea of engaging whole class? Some kids don't try. Wow, guys, um, so many of you are struggling with motivating students. Um, yeah, all I can say is you've got to uh, differentiate your classes, your instruction, the material. You should find topics that are interesting to them. You should find activities that engage your students. So, um, yeah, you need to find a way to engage your students and also for them to show off. You should give them activities where they are able to show off what, what they've learned. Marta, what do you think um, about TBL activities to develop for detail? TBL, what is task-based learning activities to develop for reading for detail? Uh, that's a really good question, Marta. Um, I, I did a video about reading activities, if you check it on my channel. Um, it's a bit of a longer question. I don't think I can answer it right now. Um, task-based learning, there's definitely a place for it. I love task-based learning because the students kind of feel that they're accomplishing something. And for detail, I'm sure they are. I can't think of any right now, but I'm, I'll am i think about it in the future, okay? Kanbanwa, ah, there we go. Thank you so much. So that's for at night, kan, uh, Kanbanwa uh, in Japanese. For Kito, you should do the Zoom with a few people. Yes, I remember sometimes less is better. Fukita, you're the first person I add to my Zoom call. I will try it in the future. Uh, Saima, we use Jolly Phonics too. Yeah, Jolly Phonics is really good. Uh, I like it too. Mario, everybody here would like to participate. Uh, I'm still waiting too. See, now you guys are saying you want to. Um, I'll think about it. Uh, yes, too, too busy these days. Mrs. Sabella, following up your course with Udemy, but very slowly I'm following the same time. TEFL special with kids. Your course is very intense. Uh, well, thank you so much. So Mrs. Sabella is talking about, um, I did a course on how to teach with Zoom. Um, yeah, thank you so much for taking that, Mrs. Sabella. I hope it helps. You know, I shot that basically a year ago. And every time I get new ideas, I add it to the course. Uh, Toby, thank you for your reply. Uh, Beatrice, hello. Uh, and then uh, Gisela, Wordwall is great. Love it. Um, I need to learn Cyrillic alphabets. I, I probably say that maybe five times, <laughs> five times a, a, a live stream. You know what you should do is there should be a bingo card for all the things I always say. So. Um, Every time Eric touches his hair, you, you get it. You, everybody takes his shots. Or every time Eric talks about the Cyrillic alphabet, everybody, like, it's almost like a drinking game or bingo game. Everybody take a shot. Uh, every time Eric uh, butchers a name, when I say a name wrong, take a shot. Yeah, so there are some things I'm sure you guys have seen in this. Um, can you please give advice how to manage my worry, scared emotion when I lead a lesson for the kids? Okay, um, yeah, so this is teacher confidence. Um, I, I'm i looking up so many of my videos. Yeah, I did a video called teacher confidence, and I think it will have some ideas for you. Um, in the future, I would like to do more videos where I talk a, a, about exact techniques and things to use. But for now, um, uh, try and watch this video and check it out. Uh, I think it might have some good tips for you. Uh, and guys, the hour is almost finished. Um, oh, here's my dad. Sally sells seashells on the sandy seashore. Sally sold seashells in her simple small shop on the southern seashore of Scotland Shetlands. Okay, okay, that was good. Any idea for transition songs? So in between activities? Mm, yeah, anything that's fun, upbeat, um, anything that the students are listening to or any fun songs. Actually, that's a good one, songs for English. 
Um, I'll look it up, English songs. Uh, there must be like a, a nice compilation of, maybe I will make a compilation of English songs, like a playlist to use. Uh, okay, guys, we're almost finished. I'm just going through. Thank you so much. I, I like these, uh, the, the smile at the end. I like to use that in my texting too, because sometimes an emoticon is too much. So you just put a smile to show that it's friendly. Ice cream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. Elsa, what's your favorite flavor of ice cream? Poquito, Elsa, let's do it. And Ariza. Okay, uh, guys, we're almost going to finish up. This was one hour. I don't know where the time went, but I want to say thank you so much for sitting with me. I really enjoyed having you. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions, if you've got anything you want, uh, you want uh, videos on, I'll definitely look at it. Or if you have a question for next time, uh, for Keto, Alsa, I'll look at doing maybe, let's make it um, two months later, maybe in March. Maybe we can do a live stream for my birthday, maybe. We'll see. Um, I'll, I'll think about it. Uh, Mario. Okay. Mario, have a fantastic week. Claudia, big thank you. More Polish friends. Claudia, oh, I'm going to have to learn some Polish words now. Uh, I say Mane, uh, love you, love from Iran. Thank you so much. Uh, I say Mane, uh, Grisella, it was nice having you. Violeta, thank you for all from Argentina, just like uh, Grisella, two from in, uh, from um, Argentina. Ciao, guys, it was nice having you. Mrs. Abiola, you were the first one here and the last one to say goodbye so appropriate everyone uh, i wish you a fantastic week um, uh, all the best to you and i'll see you next week bye bye